Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about my experience with Supervision Watercolor. I've collected a lot from this brand over the past year, so I'll be making several videos about their other sets in the future. In this one, I'll swatch the colors and share my Lightfast test results for the 10 half pan and 10 tube layered color sets. By layered, they are referring to the granulating and color separating effects that happen when heavier and lighter particle pigments and dyes are mixed together. This company does make some beautiful colors, but there's a lot of issues with this brand, so I cannot really recommend them. I'll discuss the problems I ran into and share a few DIY mixtures you might want to try instead. The half band set is almost entirely made up of simple mixtures using ultramarine blue PB29. These colors are not particularly unique, especially considering similar products from other brands and how easy these are to mix yourself. I found these pans to be slightly difficult to rewet compared to other pro grade paints, and the color separation was less dramatic or vibrant than the advertised pictures in seller listings. Black Blue and Evening Moon are nearly identical. One just uses a bit more PB29 in the mix. This seems redundant and there's not much color separation, so it seems less interesting to me than mixing ultramarine and burnt umber. The pigment load, quality, and effects are definitely not as nice as similar convenience colors available from Roman Schmall. If you're debating getting this 10 half pan set, but you already own a generic pan set assortment that includes a PB29 ultramarine blue, I would first play around with mixing every color you have with that blue to see if you're happy with what you achieve. Just be sure to use plenty of water since granulation texture is much more dramatic in very wet washes where the particles can separate as they flow. Several of the pan set colors are fugitive. I expected PB17 to fade as that pigment does in Holbein and Paul Rubens as well, but the cathedral glass color using PY65 was surprisingly bad, especially for being labeled as light fast. I have tested a lot of brands of PY65, such as Daniel Smith and Windsor & Newton's Yellow Deep, and none of them have completely disappeared in this way, even after extended duration window tests for two years or more. Within just two months, the yellow started fading away to expose the underlying ultramarine blue, and by one year, this originally green color was completely blue. They are either using a yellow dye or an incredibly weak version of PY65 that other companies don't use. Either way, I would definitely try mixing ultramarine blue with any yellow you own to see what sort of mixtures you can get instead. If you're after some extreme color separation, PB29 varieties named French Ultramarine or Ultramarine Deep will granulate much more heavily than standard or light versions of PB29. Schmincke's French Ultramarine is one of the most textural options I've ever seen. Supervision as a brand frequently uses fugitive pigments and dyes in their paints. The tube set contains a lot of chemically unstable and UV sensitive plant and animal dyes, such as the carmine red made from crushed up insects in rose ash. In addition to pigments prone to fading like PR3 and PB17. A whopping 8 of 10 of the colors fade within just 1 to 3 months and change hue beyond recognition by one year in a window. Unfortunately, most of the listings for these paints only note that the colors are professional or high quality with no straightforward notes regarding ingredients or light fastness. This is sure to cause some buyer confusion as you're not really properly warned that these colors are not meant for art you'd hang up on a wall for long-term display. These are fun paints for designers where the illustration is for print reproduction or possibly even selling originals with a warning to customers that improper storage or light from a nearby window could erase this artwork off the paper over the next year. I can totally understand some artists being okay with these limitations, but this extreme sensitivity to UV light should be considered in the value of the product. I was willing to pay roughly $10 a tube to play with these beautiful colors in my sketchbook or for personal projects. 
but then I was hit with a really nasty surprise. A few months into using up the half pans I initially squeezed out of the tubes for rose ash and red blue, I went to refill them and found that the tube color had started to change in storage. I'm in a nice shady air conditioned indoor environment and these are sealed tubes. So I was pretty shocked to see a chemical instability in the red dyes so soon. Usually the worst thing to happen to watercolors in long-term storage is a little binder separation, not drastic colors changes. The red dye in both red, blue, and rose ash had completely faded away. I hoped it was extreme binder separation at first, so I squeezed the entire tube out into pans and never found a hint of the missing red dye. It was just gone. I love the effect of rose ash, so I found another seller and bought a second tube hoping it was just a one-time glitch. Sadly, the second tube was even worse, and it was just a bright greenish blue instead of that stunning blue-red combo. Then I realized I made a mistake buying any of these because I already own a bunch of dye products like Ecoline, PH Martin's Radiant, and Fountain Pen Inks. Any of these dyes can be mixed with pigment-based watercolors to make color separating effects. You'll get the most dramatic textures by using a granulating pigment-based watercolor such as Lunar Earth PBR11, Viridian PG18, Ultramarine Blue PB29, Mars Black PBK11, Cadmium Red PR108, Cobalt Teal or Turquoise versions PB28, PG50, or PB36, or a Violet PV14 combined with non-granulating dye or pigment. If you love color separating effects, I highly recommend that list I just said. It'll just help you recreate all sorts of mixtures, not just from supervision, but replicating fun colors by Daniel Smith or Roman Schmall too. Of course, you'll have superior light fastness if you only use pigments instead of dye products, but there's only so close you can replicate pigment plus dye mixtures that supervision uses with pigments only. The most dramatic color, rose ash, which I assume will have the most interest from fellow artists, can be roughly duped by mixing any cobalt teal or turquoise with a quin red or a coral color like PR209. I use Daniel Smith's cobalt teal PG50 because it's particularly granulating. But if you have access to Supervision's Cobalt Turquoise PB36 tube or pan, that would also provide a very similar effect when mixed with red pigments or dyes. Since Supervision used dye, a thinner, fine particle, vibrant red colorant that suspends more easily in water than light fast pigments, you'll get the most convincing rose ash replica mixture by also using a dye based red, like Ecoline or Fountain Pen Ink, instead of pigments like PR209. I happen to have Ecoline's Carmine color. It's a red that's slightly more magenta leaning instead of the orange leaning red they used in Rose Ash, but you could more closely replicate it with a warmer red dye or by mixing a drop of yellow dye into your red dye first. A primary trio of Ecoline can be purchased for about $15 and just a few drops at a time could be stirred in with any tube color and dried in a pan to make your own pigment plus dye convenience mixture. If you keep them on hand separately though, you gain the freedom of using them side by side or with varying ratios to achieve the color you want on demand.
I definitely think that supervision makes some beautiful colors, but I hope to help everyone take some of the limitations into consideration before deciding to buy them. I find having single pigment colors to be more versatile, and I wish I had thought to try mixing them with dye products before purchasing a product that did it for me using subpar unstable ingredients. I ended up liking the Ecoline Blue mixed with Winsor & Newton's Cobalt Violet better than the Purple Orchid color by Supervision. I was just as happy with Ecoline Yellow mixed with the affordable Cadmium Red PR108 from White Knights instead of Supervision's Red Yellow. Even the Light Fast colors Red Green and Green Purple were more interesting when I just used my PG18 Viridian and PR122 Magenta mixtures instead. I apologize to anyone who's a big fan of Supervision if this sounds really bad. These products are by no means terrible, but they aren't perfect and there may be better alternatives, especially if you already own a variety of watercolors from other brands. I wish I had known all of these things before deciding to invest in Supervision products, especially the fact that several tubes may have a brief few month shelf life before they go bad. It also wasn't fun to deal with them drying rock hard in the pan, and some colors, especially red-green, took a lot of scrubbing to get anything but a dull gray from it when trying to re-wet. Despite the weird way they dry in a pan, if you already bought them, I still recommend putting your rose ash and red-blue into a dry pan immediately, as the red dye did not fade nearly as badly as it did when it was stored in the wet tube. If yours already went bad, I recommend fixing it by adding a couple drops of red dye ink or liquid watercolor. If you require light fast paints for selling art, gifts to family, or even just feeling like you can put your time and effort into creating your best masterpiece without worrying how fast it's going to fade, stick with pigment combinations instead of adding dyes. I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments.
If you'd like to see more, you can find all of my detailed swatch card images, results from my independent Lightfast testing, and other art supply reviews on my website. I'm currently building a huge pigment database where thousands of colors can be compared side by side with paint from other brands. Updates about this project, along with line art drawings and high res color scans, are also available on Patreon. Thanks for watching.